Hello and welcome to a series of poses dedicated to our soldier phase, which we also might know as the follicular phase. This is a time when we are very active and when we have a lot of energy to expend. We harness that energy for our health so that we can get our blood pumping quickly, release any fire that might be inside of us that maybe shouldn't be oriented toward others or ourselves. And in that process of release, we might discover and uncover some new understandings that are going to help us get through our day, tackle an obstacle, or just help us be in peace and serenity. Let's get started. Let's begin with an inhale, two hands to the heart. Exhale, hands come to either side for mountain pose. Inhale, two arms come up, meeting overhead with a steeple grip. And let's take standing side bend to the right. Imagining yourself pressed between two large glass window panes. Feeling your body stretch on the inhale and relax into the stretch on the exhale. Inhale back to center and now let's exhale and let the body side bend to the left. Reaching on the inhale, relaxing through the exhale, reaching on the inhale, anchoring through those two feet giving yourself a strong base so that you can lean farther. Inhale, come back to center, and now exhale your arms to either side and move to the front of your mat, which side doesn't matter. Let's inhale, hands to heart. Exhale, swan dive to standing forward, fold Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, let's move in to plank. Make sure you use that protective grip that I love to talk about. And here, I'd like you to take a few breaths, inhaling to your first and second chakra, exhaling, releasing and contracting that same area, inhaling, letting that area expand. And on the next exhale, we're going to take side plank on the left side, keeping that protective grip with your left hand. This is preparation for a handstand. Don't worry, we're not doing it today. But you want to always keep that protective grip because it will strengthen your hand and keep you from having injuries. And let's exhale back to center plank. And we're going to pause here for just a few breaths inhaling and exhaling at your pace to those lower two chakras when you're ready on the next inhale i'd like you to shift to side plank on the right side keeping an activation across your wingspan from fingertip to fingertip emphasizing that rise in the hips so that you can really keep the integrity of this pose. When you're ready, inhale and then exhale, release back to center plank. We're gonna take just one or two breaths here, solid breaths just to settle in this pose for just a moment before we make our move. When you're ready, we're going to flip over to reverse table reverse tabletop, keeping our core and our pelvis flat. Our gaze might look across our knees or up to the sky, or we might break our neck and look backwards. If you feel up for it, go ahead and straighten those legs for reverse plank. Breathing here, making your body flat like a board so a ball could easily roll down your to your toes and now come back to reverse tabletop and when you feel ready bring your seat to meet your hands so that you find yourself in staff pose dandasana here in staff angling to have a flat back we're going to bend forward trying to keep the integrity of that flat back we might grab our feet we might grab our calves 
trying to keep that flat back. And when you feel ready, inhale and then release to let the back round so that now the emphasis comes on the stretching of your hamstrings, of your calf muscles. When you feel like you've had a nice stretch there, take one more inhale into those lower two chakras and then bring that right foot up so that it is kissing the bottom of your hip at your crotch. And you're going to reach up through your right side body, reaching back around that right knee, bringing the left arm to Clutch that right hand and you'll find yourself in seated spinal twist, the krasana. Here, the gaze is much less important than how strongly your shoulders stay in alignment with your core so that you can really get a stretch in that thoracic spine. Now, from here, we're going to go to heron pose. I like to say hero pose. So you're going to bend that right foot that you just were wrapping your arms around, bend it backwards so that it's half hero. And you're going to kick up that left foot and grab your left toes with your right hand. You can put your left hand on your hip or you can grab your foot, your left foot with that left hand to make a stronger grip and a stronger base, a stronger clutch for that left foot. And from here, we're going to go to cow face pose. It's a simple transition. You're just going to bend that left foot that was in your hand, let it wrap over that right leg and center the knees so that they stack on top of each other and you're there. You are welcome to take the optional grip for cow face pose if you are accustomed to it. If this is new for you, just focus on the legs because that's gonna be enough, enough for today. Take it easy. This is a somewhat advanced series of poses because we like to jam out in follicular phase. I go through these much more slowly in other videos. Unwrap cow face pose to boat pose, Navasana. And here, again, whatever variation suits you, legs straight, legs bent, arms straight, you can grab your feet, whatever feels good here. And when you've had a, enough breaths, we're just going to unwrap boat pose and go right into our seated spinal twist, Vakrasana, on the other side. So this time you're wrapping the left arm around the left knee, grabbing that those hands uh, with the right hand wrapping around the back side of the body to grab the left hand. And when you've really settled into that pose, you're feeling good, 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 unwrap and move into here and pose. Letting that right leg this time kick to the sky. That left leg bends back in half hero. And when you're ready, breathing into those lower two chakras, you're welcome to grab that foot with both hands, feeling that pose and unfold the pose now bringing the knees on top of each other into cow face pose, unbending that left leg so that it bends in the other direction, unbending that right leg so that it bends over the left leg, the knees kiss each other, your body bends up and forward over those two knees for cow faced pose, Gomukhasana. You're welcome to take the optional grip. This time, the left hand is going to fold up and over through the shoulder blades. The right hand is going to fold down and catch the left hand at the shoulder blades. One more inhale and exhale to boat pose, Navasana. You're welcome to do something different. 
on this side. You can do a toe hold if you haven't already. You can keep the hands and do sort of a, I've heard it referred to as a lightning bolt, but lightning bolt is also a different pose. Uh, we'll call it the shocker, doing a shocker, very sharp version of boat pose. And when you're ready, you're just going to inhale. And on that next exhale, come to tabletop. And I'm mentioning tabletop just as a point of reference. Move right through tabletop to child's pose. And here in child's pose, we're going to prepare for rabbit pose, sasangasana. To do this, you're going to grab your heels and use them to anchor your body. So just wrapping your arms around your legs, grabbing your heels, and then pushing up and over so that your head stays on the ground and you feel an amazing stretch through that upper neck, through the middle back. And this is a pose that you will grow into over time. It's going to feel a bit awkward the first time, but there's so much for you there. So if you have more time, you're welcome to come back to that pose and just feel that stretch. From here, we are going to move into Shriyasasana A. Headstand. If you are not used to doing headstand, this is not the series of poses in which to learn headstand. There are at least two videos where I go point for point through headstand and I take my time. Watch those. Everybody else, go where you're comfortable. Build into headstand very slowly. Make sure that you're pushing into those elbows with your full energy so that your head is holding barely any weight to the point that your head could rise off of the ground because those three points, your gripped hands and your elbow points are doing all of the work. This is another time where I always say shoulders pinning towards the core is always the way to go. When we're upside down, that is where it becomes extremely important that we keep those shoulders moving in the direction of that core. So they're moving away from the ground right now, not towards it. Some people describe headstand as a resting pose. Okay. But for the rest of us, headstand is a graduated pose that is able to be sustained for long periods of time if you build slowly and diligently. When you're ready, come down from headstand and we're going to move immediately. We're just going to roll our legs back. So you're going to unwrap from headstand and you're going to roll back into shoulder stand. Shoulder stand is one of those poses where you cannot turn your head. So watch the video before attempting this part. Shoulder stand is also a pose that I go into great depth and show you how to build up into. So this is not the video to learn shoulder stand. And if you're looking at the screen right now, don't, please don't, not while you're in the pose because you will injure your neck. You're welcome to take any variation on shoulder stand. No arms, moving the arms up the legs, um, taking fire log pose in shoulder stand. When you feel ready, you can let your legs press down, controlled over your head for a nice little ab workout, or you can let the legs bend and then let the knees land on the ground first. I like to take deaf man's pose here and actually earmuff my ears with my knees. It is such a comforting, comforting experience. When you feel ready, you're going to ease your way out of shoulder stand in a steady, controlled way. And we're, we're going to push right up to our feet, Uttanasana, standing forward pose, and begin our balancing series with half-bound lotus standing forward pose, Ardha Bada Padamatasana. You're going to bring your right foot to half lotus, and then you're going to grab that right toe 
by wrap with your right hand by wrapping it around across your back to grab that to make that bind and from here you're going to be in tree and i'd like you just to slowly bring that knee up towards your shoulder tip and then kick that foot back to move into dancer's pose kicking that foot back that right foot kicks back to catch it with that right hand you're going to kick up 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 with that right foot until it pushes you forward into standing split just a mild adjustment to rotate and square those hips so that you are really with in integrity with the standing split and then let's move to the other side doing the very same thing except the left foot is going to go into half lotus so half lotus on the left side catching that left toe hold with the left hand making your way up by rolling up through the spine or taking flat back to tree pose to bound tree bringing that left knee towards your shoulder tip and then kicking that left foot backwards catching that left foot with your left hand to kick 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 up 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 reaching for the sky until that left foot pushes you up and over into standing split urdhva prasarita ekapadasana standing split squaring those hips and slowly bringing that left foot down to meet the right foot breathing through it and again we're at uttanasana let's roll up through the spine coming to our final pose today which is mountain pose rolling those shoulders up to kiss the ears rolling them back so that they can be in their resting place pinning towards the core bring your hands to prayer inhale exhale hands open to either side mountain pose and we are complete thank you